Welcome back. We're diving into the mailbag again for today. Catherine writes in from Romeoville, so she loves the garden segment, wants to know about when to put up her hummingbird feeder. In our email exchange, she also tells me it's the first time putting in a hummingbird feeder. So in our area, you can put them out about now, say mid to late April around. Here's what most experts recommend. It's important to note these are much more high maintenance than a regular bird feeder, though. In cooler weather, when temperatures are below 70, you should change the nectar out about once a week. When temperatures warm, to between 70 and 80 degrees, you'll want to change out the nectar twice a week and inspect it to make sure it's fresh. Now, if it's above 80, you want to change out the nectar every other day or so. Hummingbirds, though, have huge appetites in warmer weather. Spoiled nectar looks cloudy, can smell a little off or have some mold, but the best sign nectar has gone bad if you don't have any hummingbirds. They can usually tell when nectar is off before we humans can. For positioning a hummingbird feeder from the website mybirdgarden.com, they suggest positioning them away from direct sunlight within easy reach so you can refill and clean it and near porches, patios or paths. You want high enough to prevent predators like say cats from reaching it, but not much higher than say six to 10 feet off the ground and away from windows and tall trees. John in Wrigleyville neighborhood of Chicago writes in about Easter lilies, wants to know what's the deal with these lilies and the flowers just die off and that's it. He wants to know if they'll survive if he plants them in his backyard. And yeah, for it, that's it for this year. For many types of flowering plants, lilies included, they bloom and then put the leaves, uh, make energy for the bulbs below the soil so they can bloom in the next year. Easter lilies is a perennial plant native to Japan and Taiwan. They can tolerate grow zones 5 through 11, so they are decently cold hardy. And being zones 5 and 6 around Chicagoland, we can plant them outside here. Often the lily you see in the store has been cultivated in a greenhouse to bloom in time for Easter. So if you put that lily in the ground in your yard, it will likely follow its more natural pattern and bloom in the late spring or early summer. It will like a spot that gets bright but indirect sunlight. So good luck. In honor of Earth Day coming up on the 27, I saved a question from a viewer over the winter when Ben in Harvard asked an interesting question of, is gardening good for the environment? Well, it's a simple question with some pretty deep philosophical currents. So I'd say mostly yes and partly no. Nature was doing just fine before humans. Gardening and farming both harness nature for our own needs, and sometimes that means a lot of artificial input into making both activities happen. So some huge agribusiness and some intensive gardening practices can deplete soil and water resources faster than nature can replenish itself. So that can create a, some, a vicious downward spiral that require more fertilizer inputs and more wasteful uses of water. But for the people involved, gardening and farming can also do some amazing things like one, enhance parcels of land or, or the, of the natural world in many ways and sometimes restore the damage that humans have done to the planet. There are wonderful activities for people to get in touch with the outdoors, to appreciate the beauty of the natural world, and are being a part in it. So in that regard, the more people that find themselves connected to the nature around us because of gardening and farming, then the natural environment will certainly benefit from these activities. Great question, and happy Earth Day. If you've got any gardening questions, email me here at the station, tjoyce at wgntv.com. And make sure to tell me where you live, and pictures of your problem plants can also be a big help, too. Coming